for you. So let's talk about all those different ways that we can do things. Um, and then the food of the week is health extensions, probably something that you might not be aware of or familiar with. This might be the best food for your dog. And so we're going to review it and you let you you know, make that decision. Right. Hey, I, I want to check that out. Some simple solutions, and we'll talk about health extensions and the Australian Shepherd. That's all coming up. But first, big voice guy. It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. What's that? Hold on, he's whispering something. Oh boy. What? Uh -oh. Oh, he's got a grin he's, on his yeah, face. Yeah, he said. He says, "Do you remember what I did for Valentine's Day last year?" <laughs> and he said he's going to do it again. Do you oh, remember like the, the Cupid I, costume? Remember? You mean he's going to start yeah. coming into the studio like that again? He was that shooting was... Those, those Valentine's Day you... hearts. With... All right, Jay, we need to be prepared. When he does that, we need to have something to come back at him with. Maybe like a, a robe. <laughs> we, we have two more shows before Valentine's Day, so we better be ready What will Big Voice Guy do? We'll, we have to have a robe ready. Oh, a yes. very large robe for that guy. Yes, please. Please. He's, he's hairy, and it's just not a sight for... For people, we got the video camera going. It's a family friendly show. You know, we got to make sure to <laughs> take care of this. All right, Freddie the cat for our amazing pet story of the week. He saved his family of five from a house fire. This is Millbury, Ohio. Cute cat, too. Uh, Freddie, he's, uh, I don't know what type of cat that is. I, I'm bad at telling what kind, types of cats, but uh, Tiger Stripes cat. Um, family of five spending the night at a hotel following an early morning fire, but they are thankful to be at that hotel because of Freddie. Freddie is being called a hero. Normally en enjoys climbing up on the family's countertops, and he woke the family up from a fire that would have taken more than just their garage. The kitten was brought home. I love when this happens, too. They just brought him home three months earlier, and without him, who knows if this family would have survived this right. fire. So, we've seen that so many times. I know, right? It's amazing. Uh, he was saved from Bowling Green. He was he was covered in oil when they found him in Bowling Green, Ohio. And so they named him Freddie in honor of the Bowling Green K uh, State University mascot, which is named Freddie. So anyway, Freddie woke up Mr. Brown, who found out the garage and the back room was on fire. And the there was lots of popping noise and smoke. And everyone loves Freddy even more now that he was able to get them out and aware and make them aware of their fire. And they all got out safely. They're staying at a hotel. The crews came in and they were able to contain it to mostly just the back of the home. And that family safer now because of Freddy. Freddy the hero. Freddy the cat. Our amazing. Pet looks like a Fred. Week. Yeah, he does look like a Fred. And uh, Gilbert looks like a Gilbert, too. <laughs> I can't picture Lucy and Zoe looking any different than they do, too. Those The names just sit, seem to fit perfectly. It's interesting how our minds work. Yep. It's uh, Positive Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. And we will be back with more after this. Check out $5 Nail Trims and buy 10, get one on dog and cat food. Check it out. It's Petland of Iowa City on Lower Muscatine. We'll be back. We'll talk about the Australian Shepherd and some simple tools you can use to make that walk or jog or run that much more pleasant. Details coming up. Good morning. Promo? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, what's something funny on that? Wow. Well, I haven't had that happen for a while. Just in time for the... Uh, Here, hold on. Hey, Kassar, I'm about to go on air on radio. Can I call you back? Yeah, if everything's looking good. Okay. Okay. All right, bye bye. Let me turn that volume. I normally have that off. Yeah, that was good timing. That was right as we hit the break, too. Help visitors to KGN CBS. Oh, I did that last time. Add a photo. I added a photo thinking it was going to my thing. I'm like, I get. Uh, You've just exceeded 5,000 views. You've just exceeded 8,000. Congratulations. Oh, 10, wow. I'm like going crazy out How there. How did that happen? Well, I get a, these a photo like, that you put out on KGAN? Yeah, I get on my Android the way a notification comes up. Mm -hmm. And it just said, it's like, like my Google is signed in. Mm -hmm. And then when I go places, it says, you know, give a review, give them feedback, post a photo, you know, kind of a thing. Uh huh. And it's funny. I thought it was going to have me post a photo here. I thought that's what it was going to say. Oh, okay. But you haven't flagged this oh, okay. place, yeah, you know, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. 
And uh, I was like, oh, cool, I'll post a photo here. I wonder if I can f like just look it up and do it. I wonder, yeah. But um, it was funny, though, because I get so much That's feedback cool, on though. it. That's good. It was it's free. Yeah, it's good to get all those impressions for free, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. In three, two, <clears throat> one. 800 KXIC Morning Host, Jay Capron here with Ron Salzrud. What are we going to talk about this week on the Positively Petland Show? We're going to talk about the Australian Shepherd, which actually doesn't come from Australia. It comes from what well, we're going to find out. <gasps> then we're going to talk about, are you having problems with walking your dog? Hey, we've got different kinds of collars and leads to help you with that. You've tried some? There are a lot of different kinds. So let's we're going to talk about all the different kinds on there. And then health extension dog and cat food might be the best food for your dog. We're going to review it on air. That's the Positively Pitland Show, Sunday mornings at 9 on KXIC. Good job. It's funny. Your accent almost sounds the same for whatever country oh, we're is. doing. And <laughs> my wife doesn't even comment about it. You just, she's, she's, you know, I don't even know what it sounds like. But she goes... <laughs> Um, that's not a really good accent. It's like the same for every country. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> Listeners probably are always laughing. The Orient. Yep. Australia. Australia. <laughs> Germany. Germany. <laughs> China. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. I'm not an actor. It's all right. I can't. Yeah. It's funny. It's yes. funny. All right. In three, two, one. Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show. AM 800, KXIC, Iowa City. Having some fun, talking pets. Ron, when you get a chance, if the Australian Shepherd comes by you, I'd like for you to put it up to the camera so the listeners can see the eyes. Uh, and I don't know how well it'll show up, but give it a shot. Well, can we take also a picture and put it on uh, yes, Facebook? Yes, yes. Um, it's the it's really what stood out to me because I only saw the one eye at first looking right out at me and when he brought him in in the crate and uh, once I pulled the dog out I I noticed it has very piercing blue eye I believe it's the right eye and then the left eye is brown so two completely different colored eyes with that beautiful merle coat and just a gorgeous gorgeous puppy here in studio and we're going to talk about the Australian Shepherd. It's a good segue into that, I think, if uh, you'd like to tell us about it. Well, the Australian Shepherd was just looking into the camera, and it was so cute because it was looking back and forth like, uh, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you'll, you'll want to check out YouTube on that. We can look it up. If you looked up on YouTube, pause, P-A-W-S, positively Petland Radio Show, You'll a bunch of them will come up, mm -hmm. and this is you know this is the most recent one. It does have Australia in that uh, link as well. So... We are going to talk about the Australian Shepherd, and I have not given away. And I remember mm. asking you this one: Where mm. does the Australian, where does the actual breed itself that we see today originate from? Because your first thought would be Australia. Australia. So it's and there's since, a reason. We'll since talk it's about not, that. I'm going to say somewhere close, like New Zealand, America. Really? It's a what? What the heck? It's a Western breed. It's a farm Western. So why is it Australian? Then? Okay, let, let's find a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So references to Australian. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Let me stage this thing a little better. So we, uh, I'm going to go into AKC's description of the Australian Shepherd because I just love the way they write their uh, descriptions and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's the history. Uh, so references to Australian Shepherd can be found as far back as the middle of the 19th century. Hmm. The dog is probably a confluence of various herding breeds that made their way to the farms and ranches of the American West as a uh, wool market became established in, the par in this part of the country. I didn't know. The, I guess that I'm a little ignorant on the wool industry on that part. Um, while oh, okay, here, what am I thinking? Sheep. Yeah, okay, makes all sense now. While the Australian Shepherd breed is uh, indisputably American, it may have acquired its Australian uh, moniker because there were various collie type imports from Australia. Some of them accompanying Basque shepherds who made a significant contribution to the character and intelligence of the breed. So that's uh, the history of it. So it's, why do they call it Australian Shepherd? Because a lot of the breeds that make up the Australian Shepherd uh, were from 
okay. Austra- Australia. Okay, that makes so sense. That makes sense. Um, and I always, you know, make a vignette here. Those that say I don't like mixed breeds and all that kind of stuff realize all purebreds were mixed breeds from the past, and yet again here we're seeing it. Uh, so form and function of this breed, uh, they're very complicated and physically demanding. Uh, work resulted. Oh, all of that uh, resulted in dogs who combined keen intelligence and intuitiveness with superb athleticism and willingness and ability to do anything asked of them. So we are talking in this case about that the standard Australian Shepherd. In the studio today, we have a toy, which is a much smaller, about a fourth of the size as an adult. Uh, we're talking in that 10 pound range. Um, so this one is not going to be as physically demanding just because it's a small breed. I always like to talk when we talk about breeds and, you know, what, what breeds right for you. You want to think of size. Size plays a very important role. Uh, are you one to uh, want to play a lot physically? Get a larger dog. If you want less of that physical side of things with your dog, get a smaller dog. And so this one, if you're like, oh, I love the Australian, I love the look of it, I love the demeanor, oh, but just the demanding of that large breed version of the Australian Shepherd, uh, I don't have the yard, I don't have the space, I don't have the patience for that. Um, the toy would be a really good option for you because now everything's smaller, everything's less. So a little bit to talk on, you know, on the side about size. Um, they were often treated as part of the family too, uh, laying the groundwork for a breed that is known for its loving loyalty and winning sense of humor. You don't hear that too much about a dog sense yeah. of humor. Huh. Mischievous. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> then uh, yes, yeah, maybe that's where we're going with that. Uh, living with an Aussie, uh, ranchers and stockmen bred a dog that could run all day long. In the in so going back to our conversation, in this case, it's a toy breed uh, down that that ten pound range. It is not going to want to run all day long because it's such a sm- much smaller dog. Uh, in all, in, in, but they can do all this in all kinds of weather. This one does have a thick coat, and so it will be durable as far as weather goes. Um, so they do this over long distances if need be, assisting with the herding of sheep and cattle or managing any other ranch or farm tasks required of them. So that's you know going back to their origins. Uh, these all-purpose farm workers, are also excellent watchdogs uh, being renowned for their reserve, their unwillingness to accept a stranger until the stranger has been thoroughly checked out. Hmm. <clears throat> so are you looking for that dog that's a little curious about strangers, that knock on the door, that that person that, you know, is not familiar with? This is a great, like, I, I like it when, pe- when people say we want a guard dog, I always caution, don't treat train your dog to be mean mm-hmm. that's going to come natural to most dogs and and i know it's a cliche but that might come back to bite you and, oh yeah. in a real way though and because it definitely a friend does. or a cousin or someone who that could end up and i've seen it happen too many times that's why i bring it up is i think it's important that people realize you train that dog to be mean doesn't mean it's only going to be mean when you have an intruder it it is it, you're you're allowing that behavior and it's just sad you hear some stories about that and Little kids get bit, other people get bit, and then the dog gets put down. So it's, Yeah, uh, and that's a horrible thing yeah, to go through. Good, it's not good for anybody. So what I've always said, if you want a guard dog, uh, you know, that mentality, treat your dog normally. When that intruder, when that stranger, when that knock on the door, you know, kind of a thing occurs, the dog is going to go into action because it's, your, it's part of your pack. Um, with our own house, Susie will bark in two different situations. One, when the kids are playing with her and riling her up, she'll start getting vocal. Um, she'll also, though. Do you allow that, by the way? Yes. Yeah. That's, well, I don't have a choice in that. That's the only I'm just a stand by her in that okay. family. But I, I know, would prefer but I a that. quiet dog. I was going to say, I know that you've taught her not to bark. So I'm yes. just curious if you allow her to bark when oh, playing. Oh, we. I trained her to bark in those two, or I allowed, you know, kind of okay. the barking to occur okay. in those two areas because I, that was, there was no way I was going to uh, overcome those two obstacles because our family promotes both of them. Right. So when it's barking at the door, they were all laughing and, oh, you know, kind of thing. And I said, well, that's a losing battle. I'm not going to, you know, win that battle. Mm. Uh, when they were playing, I would say, hey, you know, you are promoting her to bark right now, you know, and you said that she was getting a little vocal before. 
And they said, but this is when we want her to bark. So what we ended up coming to is a happy medium. And we're talking training here and we're not going into, uh, maybe that's the next show talking about barking and how to help your dog bark when it should and not bark when it shouldn't. Um, but we uh, helped Susie understand barking just like out of the blue um, is not good, but barking when the door uh, uh, bell rings or the door knocks is good. Um, and then it, uh, when we're playing is good. Does she stop when the person enters the house? Uh, okay. We open the door and she goes out. I can't help it. She goes out and greets them like with kisses, it, you know, kind it, of, oh, yeah, okay. it's very friendly That's thing. Good. That's good. But so I talked with many here. We're getting off on a tangent a little bit, but the police officers, uh, just talking with them. If you have a dog in your house, uh, well, do you know what the number one way is to to prevent an intruder from, from entering your house? Lock the door. Lock the door. Right. Uh, so that's f number one. Number two, a barking dog. That's it. They don't want it to, have to be big. Yeah. Hey, I'm be... not going to figure out if this dog is nice or mean or anything like that. I'm you not going to mess with You don't need a 200-pound mastiff, right? You just need a dog that barks and it makes a noise. Right. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, it's bringing attention to that house. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. the dog is barking. And you know, sometimes you can hear that at the neighbor's house. Wakes up the neighbors. Or, yeah. What's you know, going on? Yeah. Yep. So. Good. So, all right. So, we got a... That was a nice vignette. Um, the standard Australian Shepherds. Uh, are going to be 8 to 21 inches as a female. These are standards. Um, and then 20 to 23 inches at the shoulder uh, for males. And again, we have a toy. So this one's going to be about a fourth of that size or, well, maybe not quite a fourth of those inches, but a uh, much smaller dog. Uh, living with uh, these. Okay, that's what we got into. These all-purpose... Oh, I lost my spot, so I might have to uh, repeat myself. Uh, these all-purpose farm workers are excellent work dogs. Oh, yeah, and we talked about that. Um, the accepting strangers, uh, his unflagging loyalty and devotion, willingness to please, winsome sense of humor, breathtaking athleticism and elegance, and overall enduring personality, each one unique, meaning each one of the breed, make the Aussie a magnificent companion for individual and family alike. Their intelligence, abundant energy, and high spirits need to be challenged, meaning training, uh, an Australian Shepherd must have a job, an active one, to be happy and healthy as a dog. Uh, I find that with uh, our dog at home, our poodle, needs needs to have a job. It needs to be doing something, and then uh, then they're happy. It's kind of funny thinking of that. Um, you know, some people might go, well, you know, that training is a lot of work. Realize your dog loves it. They love to see the boundaries. Tell me where I'm supposed to work. Tell me when you love me the most because I want to do that because I love it when you pick me up. I love it when I get to lick your face. I love all that stuff. And so uh, by encouraging behaviors and engaging and training, um, you allow your dog to interact like that. And, and dogs obviously love that. And that's why we love our dogs. No doubt. Everyone's happier and it's a good thing. So, and that's actually a way, great way to segue when everybody's <laughs> happier, it's just better for, for the pet. It's better for the owner. And when you're walking your dog and it's pulling you and it's trying to stop at every tree, it wants to chase every animal, squirrel, bird it sees. That's not so much fun. And a lot of people are picturing, oh, that perfect walk with the dog where it's just trotting next to you yeah. so what beautifully and not not you know that's not a reality for a lot of people because they haven't uh, used some of these tools and they haven't uh, trained their dogs as well so you're going to talk about that today what's that the power walker yeah this is okay so i'm going to talk you know a lot of people get the retractable lead i think we all can like say okay well i know what that is but why do you get a retractable lead because my dog keeps on yanking my arm out of the socket well, a dog that will pull two feet will also pull 20 feet. And so just by getting a retractable lead, you might get a little bit of relief in the short distances, but realize that dog didn't learn anything on that move. They said, oh, well, now I can go out here. And you know what? I want to go over here now, too, a little further, a little further, a little further. So the retractable lead only encourages pulling. And in fact, the failure mode to these retractable leads is always they just are overextended and the little mechanical linkages inside fail um, because the dog just continues to pull. Uh, I'm now right here. Describe this. What am I holding? It's uh, the end of the lead, but the lead is gone. You yeah. Know, kind of thing. So it's a very short lead. This is, in fact, is rated as a 12 inch lead. And I would yeah. I think it's a foot long. Yeah. 
if you add the metal part to it. So this, so just picture a loop um, with the clasp that hold, you know, latches onto the the collar, but it really short. So now your dog will say, well, I want to go over here. And now you can train, work with your dog and train them to stay close. Like everybody wants the dog to walk right next to me. That would be tough think. if you had a really small dog though, right? Uh, yes, to you would. Reach, and actually low. they have little, uh, they have some longer ones longer. if they're, if you yeah. have a small. Sh- that that would work for like a lab. Yes. Uh, this if you had the, one of these little ones, you'd have to. Yeah, you and you're like six four. So you be, <laughs> Frank, I don't like these walks anymore. <laughs> um, so w- the purpose of these shorter, much shorter leads is is okay. Now have your dog um, be much closer to you, and you incentivize them with a treat or that lickety stick that we talk about from time to time. Um, things that will encourage them to stay close to you. I like what you're doing right now. Here's a treat. When they're pulling, then you're pulling them back in and getting them close to your foot. When they're at your feet walking, now you're giving them a treat and saying, hey, I like what you're doing. Continue doing what you're doing kind of a thing. So uh, shorter leads are actually better at training your dog to walk right next to you. Okay, so you might go, yeah, but that ain't happening. Now I'm holding in what's called a martingale collar. And so this one, it looks like a, you know, a normal thickness collar, you know, kind of a thing goes around their neck, but it has an extra little linkage in it so that when you pull on the lead, it tightens it up. Oh, ever so, you know, little, it doesn't, you know, you're, you're going to get it around the neck. And then when it, when they tighten it up, when you pull on the lead, it just gets a little tighter, Mm -hmm. not a choke chain. I'm not talking about this. This one's called a martingale. And what this is meant to do, uh, the uh, uh, greyhound families uh, know what a martingale collar is all, all about. They're very popular with the greyhounds. For the same reason, it should be popular with everybody else, though, if your dog pulls. And so it's just a nicer way of tightening it up a little bit and the dog going, oh, wait, that's I don't like it that you know tight. And then they'll back up and allow you to walk right next to you and loosen it up a little bit. You combine this with that short collar. Now you got a pretty good training tool that's going to go back and forth if you find like what we talked about a little earlier and that your dog is just strangling itself we're not using it right you should never use these where the dog is constantly uh having it tight that's not the purpose of it and so there is some training on even a martingale collar and you'll notice we're not going to talk about choker chains or those prong chains here that's one-on-one training. Don't just go out and get one of those. Chances are you will not use it properly. And it's important to use it properly because if you don't, it doesn't work. So uh, it has its place, um, but it is something that's much more specialized and needs training to do. Now, but are you one of those people that say, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I think those are you know, nasty or whatever. I've got two collars that we're going to talk about. You put this on your dog and they will stop pulling right now and it's not anything harmful to the dog the first one i'm looking at is control ease head collar Um, if you didn't know this a dog and we kind of do the same thing we go in the direction our face is pointed so if you can only control that muzzle on that dog to point back at you when they walk away from you you know so if i could only just like grab it and turn it around to me and like and guide it back to me that would be so cool well this one connects on the snoot uh so that you could put your lead right on the bottom of its snoot um and it's kind and everything it works really well um and now when you gently pull um their head comes looking right back at you and they come walking right back at you and it's so it's a wonderful way to uh help your dog uh, not pull. Now you couple this with the treat. So when they come back to you, they get another treat. Okay. So now they get distracted. A squirrel, you gently pull their head comes back to you. They come walking back to you. They get a treat. If you start doing this stuff, you are now training your dog to, uh, not pull. So that's, uh, how you can use these in that way. The other one is a sporn collar. Sporn it has a uh, a version where when you pull on it, it has a loop that goes on through their or around their armpits area and then connects back to the collar. Uh, it's a little like when you look at it, you go, oh, that looks complicated. Once you figure out, we put it on your dog right in the store to show you, uh, you're going to go, holy cow, because when you walk with your dog with this, 
immediately stops the pulling. Uh, so we put it on your dog when you're in the store, you walk around with it, and then you're like, oh, holy cow, sign me up. This thing is re you know, really good. That's how good a quality is and how good it works. So there's a lot of people out there that just, once they see it, they go, I got to have that Sporn collar. So ask us about that one when you're in the store. Um, do you have problems when, uh, do you have multiple dogs? And you've got two leads, you know, you bought two leads, you got two dogs, you know, kind of thing. Well, there's another thing out there called a splitter. So uh, let's see, picture an upside down V. Um, you connect your lead to the top of that V now, that's upside down. Um, and then the two lengths that go out at a diagonal, those get uh, connected to the dog. And so I'm trying to do, you know, talk, talk over radio here. Mm -hmm. um, but what this does is when you have two leads that get tangled up, they wrap around your legs, they do all sorts of things, and you're like going, ah, this walk is not fun. When you get a splitter, um, now the dogs are obviously much closer to each other, but when they uh, rotate around each other or circle each other, it just twists with them, and so you don't get a tangled mess on it. They ha We have different sizes for small breeds and large breeds. They go in different lengths, so you can adjust them out and adjust them back in. Do you have a multi-splitter? Because I think I've seen a dog walker. Yeah, we have with three, and mm -hmm. yeah, there's even more than just the double. Hmm. Yeah, so there's different kinds out there. Um, I brought along some harnesses and everybody kind of knows what the harness is all about and that you put it on your dog and and it takes the stress off of their neck what i don't think people understand is is when you do that you're in, you're allowing your dog to pull more because now you know what was limiting them before was that collar around the neck and that uncomfortableness not that we want that but when you put a harness on your dog that just is going around the girth of the dog uh, now it's easier to pull, and so they're going to pull more as a result. So know that uh, that you you can get the harness, but it's just going to encourage them. Think of uh, sled dogs. You know, what do they have on them? They have harnesses on them. Why? Because it's more comfortable to pull. Mm -hmm. So that seems, I think that makes logic right there. And then finally, I wanted to talk about uh, runners out there. There are leads now where you have a waist strap going around you and then the lead connects to that. Uh, so a really ingenious way to uh, do a hands-free jogging leash. Uh, when you, If you're going down this path, just know your dog. We got a couple of different varieties of it. Realize that you are now connected to the dog. When you have a lead in your hand, you can always release, you know, just in case. Um, when you're connected and that dog goes woof, mm. uh, you're going woof with it, you know, kind of a thing. So um, I think some training on the front end is needed and familiarity with your dog when you're using these running leads. Um, they are very convenient so that you can swing your arms freely when you're running. Mm -hmm. or, or let's say you're a power walker and you got to get those those arms, you know, rocking and rolling as well. This would be a nice uh, way to do that with hands free with your dog uh, connected at the hip. Uh, so uh, know your dog before you do it so that you know, you know, what triggers your dog so that you can be cautious in those areas. If it's, a, you know, another dog in, uh, on the other side of the fence or you're running along in the woods and there might be a squirrel, understand that, you know, you, you could, you know, your dog could get excited about that mm -hmm. and, and cause a, a little disruption to your walk. So those are the leads. How much time do we have left? That's just about it for the that. We have time for health extensions. All right. So let's about. talk about health extensions. Uh, health extension dog food is made in Ohio, and it's something that veterinary uh, uh, a family worked with veterinarians to come up with. Uh, you know what is that best food and all that. And I know a lot of foods have gone down this path where you know obviously they're going to con consult uh, veterinarians, um, and this is one of those. Uh, it's even called Vets choice health systems. Uh, that's the name of their company. Uh, they are, are very uh, intense with using veterinarians to help them design things. So uh, I actually feed this at home. I feed the larger kibble version and there's a smaller kibble version that we have in the store as well. It is the smallest kibble I've ever seen in dog food. Um, we use it uh, with our puppies in the store and we get amazing results on it. Dogs, uh, uh, it's a very attractive food. Uh, so that's a nice thing to have. 
Uh, the kibble is really small, and that tends to be also an attractant for dogs, it, you know, easier to eat and all that. Um, the larger kibble that you use, the better it is for their dental hygiene. So um, as our dogs grew, we got into the bigger kibble. And I just was going to read a little bit about, you know, what they say about their food. Holistic health extension, uh, original dog food, that's uh, a lot, just a larger kibble formula offers your pet the ultimate completely balanced diet containing highly digestible meat proteins. So they're saying they're not just putting fillers in there, they're putting digestible uh, meat proteins in there. Our unique blend of nutritional supplements separate health extension from other super premium dog foods. There's actually a, a category now known as super premium. Um, health extensions from other Super premium. Oh, I just said that. Uh, offering uh, your pet this superior blend will proactively provide your dog with the benefits of a healthier life. Some uh, 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 what bullet points about it. Uh, they're, they are definitely using real chicken. They've always done that. Uh, but they're now boasting that there's even more. They've upped that. Uh, in the product. There are no byproducts in here, no corn, no soy, no wheat, uh, no artificial colors or dyes. If you see any color in any food, um, there's really no reason for that. The dog doesn't even notice that. That's more from a visual on your part. No rendered animal fats, no gluten, no, or, or, no artificial preservatives, uh, no added sugar. So they're saying that, hey, this is just the good stuff uh, in here. Um, come into the store if you're interested in it. I love the back of the bag of this product because it goes through all the really unique things that they put in here. Uh, apple vinegar, which has been known to help the dog skin and coat and, and, and other items. And I was like, I've never seen that before mm. in my life. Um, but a lot of other things that they're uh, putting into their food to help it live a healthier life. Health extensions. And you can learn more by going to Petland of Iowa City. Just ask them about that food and they'd be happy to talk to you and get you set up with some and try it out. See if it's the right pet food for you. We are out of time, Ron, as we wrap up, anything else you want to mention? We're pet land of Iowa city loaded, located at marketplace mall, right across the parking lot from Lucky's market. Uh, we have what our, uh, buy 10, get one free on all of our dog and cat food. You don't even have to track it. We do that for you. It comes out at the bottom of the receipt every single time you buy the food. So you know where you're at. And then we got the five dollar nail trim. You can't beat a five dollar. You trim. can't beat it. No appointments. Just come on in with your vaccination schedules. We'll get you trimmed up and uh, out in a jiffy. All right, good deal. That's Ron Salzer. I'm Jay Caper, and this has been the Positively Petland Show. Check it out online at kxic.com on YouTube. Type in Positively Petland Show or Petland Radio, and tune in right here to AM 800 KXIC Sunday mornings at nine. Till next week. Bye. Ow, 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 ow,